Hello there. Today we're going to be looking at all of the rares, their locations and drops inside of the wetlands. I've never been a huge fan of the wetlands as a zone, I think it is a little depressing and a little too murky for my taste, however there are 8 rares in total and there is some decent loot to be had. So without further ado, let's check it out. Maruk Wormscale So up first we have Marek Wormscale, a level 23 rare that hangs around in a building in Dun Algaz. If you're a dwarf or a human you'll probably know Dun Algaz as the place where you have to kill the orc before you first go into the wetlands, and as a result this area is very, very popular with players. The chances are this guy is probably dead, even though he does have a relatively low respawn time, I believe it's around about 8 hours. The fight with him is not particularly difficult either, he's pretty easy to kill. So all you have to do is just go in there and hit him as fast as you can, there's not a lot of adds either. If you can kill him though, a 75% chance to get the Warchief's Girdle, and a 25% chance to get the Scythe Axe. I actually think even though it is a higher drop rate, the Warchief's Girdle is actually the better item here. There are a lot of really good weapons at this level anyway, but belts a bit harder to come by. Also make note there is a chest in the building as well that respawns semi-frequently, so even if he's not there, it's worth checking for the chest. Leech Widow Up next we have Leech Widow, a level 24 spider that lives at the back of Thelgen Rock. Thelgen Rock of course famous for two things, the first thing being the really annoying quest to mine in Sendersite, and the second thing being Leech Widow itself. You're probably wondering why Leech Widow is semi-famous? Well the reason is because of her drops. She's not a particularly difficult fight, there are a couple of ads around her, but it's kind of par for the course for a non-elite rare, nothing very special. However, if you can kill Leech Widow, you have a 70% chance to get the Black Husk Shield, and a 30% chance to get the Black Widow Band. The Black Widow Band is what people want, it's considered a best in slot item for Caster Twinks uh, pre-20 and it's just an absolutely amazing finger. It sells for an absolute bucket load on the auction house as well, and this is why Leech Widow is probably dead on your server. Um, respawn time of about 24 hours, not to worry though, if she's not there, there's probably this chest nearby. So, hey, you didn't make the journey for nothing. Nor Bone. Up next we have Norbone, a level 25 Null that hangs around in the Sundown Marsh. When I was actually originally looking for Norbone, I assumed that he would probably be in one of the camps, but it turns out this is not the case. I don't know if he has any of the spawns, I've only ever seen him spawn in this area. However, it may be worth checking some of the other Null camps, there are a lot of solid chests in the area anyway, so it's a really good way to get loot. Norbone actually has a lot more health than what you'd expect, he's not an elite but he's probably got maybe double, maybe triple the health of an average rare. But if you kill him, unfortunately he's not going to drop any unique loot, you'll just get a random green from him. So overall, a little bit disappointing, but if you can get the chests on the way, it's probably worth doing. Maya Low. Up next we have Milo, a level 25 elemental that also is in the Sundown Marsh. Milo is actually quite special in that, well, quite fortunately he does not stealth, so he's pretty easy to pick out among the other marsh creepers in the area, and that is a good thing. He doesn't actually have as much health as Norbone, nor does he tend to do as much damage as Norbone. I don't actually know if he has any particularly special abilities at all, I just kind of nuked him down as quick as possible. However, because he isn't that special, his loot is not that special either, a random chance to drop a green. I would also say just quietly watch out for other things in the area, there's a lot of stealth creatures around here, and it may be that you get snuck up on by two or three when trying to fight this guy. Just also want to quickly mention the building at Sundown Marsh, there are two vendors there that are of great interest to engineers, leather workers and tailors. 
If you're looking for a really cool new belt as well, it's worth checking these out. All very limited stock. Inside here, the one I like the most is the fact you can get the Azor Silk Gloves pattern. There's also some really awesome belts you can buy as well, so it's definitely worth checking it out. Garnig Charskull. Up next we have Garnag Charskull, a level 29 orc at the top of the Angerfang encampment. Just as you go into the encampment you want to hang a right and then start going up the hill. He's on the right and he's flanked by two adds. I'm just going to skip a lot of the com combat here because this fight actually took uh, quite a while because I ended up pulling something else and I was all over the place. But nevertheless I'll just say this, the fight can be pretty tough. The guy hits pretty hard anyway but he's normally got two adds, well he always has two adds with him and sometimes can pull a third. As for loot, this guy has some amazing drops, Garnog's War Belt at 70% chance and the Ringed Helm at 30%. That helm is absolutely amazing, anybody that can, use, even if you can use mail I'd suggest wearing it, 8 stam is a really good stat line for level 25 helmets. Dragonmore Battlemaster Up next we have the Dragonmore Battlemaster, a level 30 orc that roams around inside of the Angerfang encampment. This guy is not that difficult to kill, the only thing you need to watch out for is all of the adds that he can sometimes pull. He roams in some areas that have a load of adds, so you just need to give it some time and wait for him to be in a more secluded area. He has a little bit more health than your average rare, but not too much, nowhere near as much as Norbone. And killing him will give you a random green. No unique loot, unfortunately, but that's just the way things are. The younger Fang encampment, you probably need to come here and do some quests anyway, so if he is there, you might as well just kill him. Razormore Matriarch. Up next we have the Razormore Matriarch, a level 30 raptor that hangs around in the aptly named Raptor Ridge. The cave at the back of Raptor Ridge is where you want to be looking, the Matriarch roams about, not in any fixed position, so if you can't find her at first, she may be dead or she just may be on the other side of the cave, it's definitely worth having a look. This mob surprised me a little bit because it actually has a lot of health, not as much as Nefaru in Dustwood, but I would highly recommend checking out the video if you've not seen that, Nefaru was an exceptionally weird fight. But nevertheless, quite a lot of health. Also has an ability to heal it by doing damage to you, so just watch out for that. If you can kill the Matriarch, a 50% chance to get the Beaded Raptor Collar and a 35% chance to get Jurassic Wrist Guards. The Wrist Guards are really good, it's really unusual to see uh, Leather Wrists drop off a mob and with that stat line, that is very worth having. Raptor Collar, I'm not so sure though. Sludgin And last but not least we have Sludgin, a level 30 ooze that is very very close to Menethil Harbour. So if you need to get to this guy you want to head out of the tavern and hang a right. Just go down the side of there you'll see a boat that's ruined on a island, little island. Go across that, past the Murlocs and he's on this little shelf here as I'm showing. Because this guy is very close to Menethil Harbour it means he's definitely worth picking up if you're in the area. He's just pretty easy to kill, nothing really too difficult, and yeah, he's just so close by, like why wouldn't you? One thing to watch out for is he places two debuffs on you, one that increases the, chan uh, the time between your attacks, and another one which leeches health from you every five seconds. If you're melee, maybe watch out for it, but I don't think it's too bad. He will drop a random green when killed, which is definitely great if you're planning on just getting this guy as you go past, it's just a free green. Here is a full map of all the rares in the wetlands and their approximate locations. I'm also going to put a link to this in the description as well so you can refer to it at a later point. So that about sums up all 8 rares, their locations and drops inside of the wetlands. Overall I'm still definitely not convinced it is an amazing questing zone, however if you're looking for loot I would definitely recommend checking it out. 
In particular, I would say that the helmet from Garnet Char Skull is definitely worth picking up, as well as the Jurassic Risk Guards if you are indeed a hunter or enhancement shaman. Both great pieces of gear, and there's some other nice smatterings of gear as well. Overall, a very good balance. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel.